be with you uh, for the launch of uh, Leadership Lessons with Dr. Susan Bernstein, a weekly Wednesday webcast. Say that three times fast. Um, I have wanted to share my wisdom with you and to be very honest and transparent, I have not wanted to uh, write. <laughs> I don't like writing. I, I mean, I can write and I'm a good writer and I wrote a dissertation uh, on over 200 pages, so I know how to write, but I'm much more natural when I get to talk and connect with you, so that's why I started this weekly webcast and I'm really thrilled to do it with you. Um, so I'm gonna be doing this every Wednesday, roughly 9.30 uh, a.m. We had a little glitch this morning. And uh, so, and some very, very loud noise in my neighborhood. And I wanted to wait until that was over so that you could hear me. And uh, this would be the best quality possible. Uh, so each week I'm gonna have a different theme. And today, here I'm ready to go with our presentation. I want to share with you this presentation. Oops, hang on just a sec. And I'm going to take us to the beginning. Uh, welcome to Dr. Susan's Leadership Lessons, Master the Strategy and Psychology to Elevate Your Leadership. This is uh, episode one, and it's about what do you want from your leadership. For those of you who I've not had the pleasure to meet, whether that's in person or through an online event, I'm Dr. Susan Bernstein. I have my MBA from UC Berkeley and a PhD in mind-body psychology from the Santa Barbara Graduate Institute. I'm an executive coach and leadership consultant, and my mission is to help you master the strategy and psychology to elevate your leadership. You can find more out about me at bernstein.com. Let me just jump right in, because that's what I want to do. I want to make Today, I want to make this and every webcast useful to you. Today, we're going to cover five things. First, I want to welcome you. That's what I'm doing now to our weekly Wednesday webcast. Uh, I want to talk about your leadership and ask you what kind of leader you want to be. I'll give you practical next steps to become that leader. And then I'll share with you how to get support for your leadership. So let's jump in. Let's talk about your leadership. I want to ask, what does leadership mean to you? I know for a lot of people, the word leadership is this very big word, and it, you know, it means that you have to have a formal title, a position in a company or an organization. And that may be how you see leadership. I see leadership more broadly as being a leader of an issue or an initiative or an idea. So there might be something that you care very deeply about that you want to bring into the world. You want to embody the traits or the characteristics of. So you don't have to have a formal title to be a leader. And although vastly all of the, uh, almost all of the executives who I work with um, in my coaching practice do have some kind of a leadership title. Sometimes I'm working with some people who are between roles. Right now I'm working with uh, a finance leader who's between roles and got very, very clear in the time that they were between roles that, you know, this person wants more than just being able to do finance, which he does very, very well, wanted to be able to do something with meaning and purpose that makes a difference. And so he's doing finance and looking for roles in healthcare because he recognizes that healthcare is the, for him the greatest leverage point to make leadership and making a difference in the health of people. So there's many ways to be a leader. I'm curious, what's your definition of leadership? I invite you to write about it, to write that down for yourself. Being a leader to me means whatever. For me personally, being a leader means having a set of values and ideals and living them and promoting them in some meaningful way every day. So I get to promote the idea of leadership and doing that um, in a way that's especially blend strategy and psychology, the strategy of being smart about how you're doing leadership, and the psychology of understanding people and their feelings, their emotions, things like that. What's your uh, leadership definition? I invite you to take a moment and think about that. And also, what kind of a leader do you want to be? <laughs> this may as well be a thought bubble over some people's heads. Oh my gosh, Susan, do you, do, do you have to be the queen of tough questions? Uh, very often, the people who are in my coaching practice 
will say, wow, another tough question from you. Are you the queen of tough questions? That's where this came from. I've been called that a number of times. I don't ask it in order to be tough. I ask it in order, I ask tough questions in order to elicit something from you, maybe surprising, maybe new, maybe uh, deeper than you've gone before in yourself. So what kind of leader do you want to be? How do you want to show up in the world? What's important for you to model and to live in your leadership? I invite you to think about this. And if you're having trouble, you're just like, I'm stumped. The next four questions are for you. So I wanna explore these four questions to help you find out what you want from your own leadership. The first of those is what leaders do you admire? What are the traits of theirs that you want to embody more of? So who is it that you think well of? And what would you like to be doing more of that they do? So for example, for me, somebody who's a leader and she wasn't elected to her position. Uh, she kind of, somebody else got elected and she fell into that position, so to speak. Michelle Obama um, started her book, Becoming. And there's so much in her leadership that is very genuine and very caring. And those are traits that I want to embody more of in my leadership. So I'll ask you, who are the leaders that you admire? And what are traits of theirs that you want to embody more of? I especially encourage you, if you've got pen or pencil and paper, to write this down for yourself. Write your own responses to these questions so you get to learn about yourself and create what you want. And the second question, what leaders do you dislike? What does this tell you to avoid in your own leadership? So as you look into the world, who are leaders that you see maybe in your organization, maybe um, in government, maybe in other positions that your organizations that you're part of, who are leaders that you dislike? You can actually use them because it triggers for you things that you want to avoid in your own leadership or ways that you want to be very different, maybe the opposite of that. So, you know, at this period of time, there are some governmental leaders who I don't think very well of. I really don't appreciate their lack of honesty and their lack of empathy. So that helps me avoid, you know, being dishonest and avoid lacking in empathy and wanting to create more honesty and empathy in the way I show up as a leader. So what about for you? What leaders do you dislike and what does this tell you to avoid in your own leadership? The third question, what if you imagine it's a year from now? So whatever the date is, add a year to that, add a year on that end of that digit. What accomplishments do you want to be celebrating in your leadership? What would feel great a year from now to have the people around you in your life, whether that's in your personal life, your professional life, both? Um, in what, what arena of leadership do you see yourself celebrating a year from now? And what is it that you're celebrating? What are you proud of? For me, a year from now, I'd like to be celebrating have a nice big audience for leadership lessons with Dr. Susan Bernstein, this weekly webcast. And I'd like to know, I'd like to be getting notes from people saying that this webcast helped them with an issue or a problem, helped make a difference. And you, a year from now, what are you celebrating in your leadership? And finally, what's your leadership word for the year and how does it inspire you? So if you took on a word to capture how you want to feel for the year, what's that leadership word? How, what are you going to embody? How does it inspire you? You could choose a word. So for me, that word is joy. I want to infuse joy into myself and be able to, you know, diffuse it out and give it to other people, spread joy in my leadership. Um, that's what's important to me. You may have something totally different and that's fine. So I'll ask you, what's your leadership word for the year and how does it inspire you? And I want to suggest some next steps with these four questions. I, yes, you can just think about them. That's great. But you could go a step further. So you can take some steps, your next steps to leadership. The first I want to suggest is journal your answers to today's four questions. Um, if you're watching me live, then go back and watch the video for the four questions. 
if you're watching a video, you know, <laughs> rewind uh, and go backwards and look through those four questions and journal your answers to them. Um, it's a great idea as a leader to know yourself. It's one of the most important things that you can do. Your relationship with yourself as a leader really matters to how you can lead others. So one way to know what you're thinking and feeling is to journal. Um, it's a known thing in uh, behavioral science that we know that people who journal get more in life. So this is my journal. Um, I handwrite in here. Um, I also sometimes draw pictures and things like that. Um, you can do it your own way, but it's a great idea to handwrite. We actually know from research that when we use our hand, it connects more to our brain than it does when we type. So uh, I would encourage you to journal your answers to today's four questions so you have them and you feel more connected to your own responses. Thing two that you can do is to make a monthly appointment in your calendar to review your responses and plan actions that will make you the leader that you want to be. So get out your calendar, put it in there uh, you know, at a date, block off 15 minutes, a half an hour, whatever, to look through these responses and again think, well, what can I be doing again to make myself the leader I want to be? And maybe you'll have new insights, new revelations. Maybe something will change in what you want for your leadership or deepen. It's great to have your journal as a tool to review all of these things for yourself. So I hope that you'll find this helpful. I hope you'll actually do this. And um, if you would like support in becoming the, the kind of leader you'd like to be, I would love to help you. You can always email or call me to apply for a complimentary consultation to talk about your leadership and see if we're a match for working together in a coaching relationship. To get in touch with me, all you need to do is email me at hello at drsusanbernstein.com or call me my U.S. phone. 5508-8250. So outside the U.S., just add a plus one to that. Um, and I would love to know, I want to make this webcast, this Wednesday weekly webcast, uh, uh, Leadership Lessons with Dr. Susan Bernstein, as useful as possible to you. So what leadership issues would you like me to talk about on the webcast? Please let me know. Uh, reach out to me at hello at drsusanbernstein.com. I would love to get your ideas and love to make a webcast that answers questions that you're dealing with. So please reach out. Uh, and finally, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being part of this community. And thank you for putting your leadership into the world. It's a joy to know you. Take care, everybody. Um, I'm, so, I'm so happy to share this webcast with you and love to get your comments and your ideas back. Again, you can always reach me at hello at drsusanbernstein.com. Bye for now.